So my sustainable education every day began when I was this big on the edge of suburbia in Clackamas, Oregon. My grandpa had some land and built us a house, and from the time I could walk, really, I had this amazing natural playground I got to experience every single day. That was my normal until I was eight. My grandpa told us he'd made the decision to sell our land, and I watched as my natural playground was swept away and replaced with empty dirt lots and stinky black asphalt pavement. I still remember the fiery feeling that spread across my chest as I turned to my mom and I told her that one day, I'll build buildings that don't destroy nature. So I grew up, I got my architecture degree, and for seven years I designed green buildings in Seattle. Then I learned about the Living Building Challenge, a green building certification system based on the idea of a flower. A flower gets all of its energy from the sun, all of its water from the rain, it's made of inherently healthy things, and it's something that's beautiful and inspirational. So. What if buildings were like flowers? That question woke eight-year-old Stacy up, and I knew I had to build one. I reached out to a team, and we donated our time to build the Birchie School Living Science Building in Seattle. It became the fourth living building certified in the world in 2012. It was a building that incorporated all the students' creative ideas and exposed all of its systems. Over the course of the first year, we watched the students become the building's commissioners and the building become their teacher. We issued a post-occupancy survey to the kids, and one fifth grader wrote, now I wonder why all buildings aren't living. That question woke grown-up Stacy up as I realized the impact if more kids started wondering that same thing. I reached out to Rick Cochran, a partner on the, partner on the Birchie School Project, and together we founded the Seed Collaborative. We started asking each other, what if? What if we could take all the systems and components we put into that Birchie School Project and create a living building classroom that was portable? There are currently 350,000 portable classrooms in use across this country. 150,000 more are projected to be put in place in just the next two years, and they'll continue to look like this unless we do something about it. <laughs> I'm pretty passionate about it, you can probably tell. Um, a standard portable is typically just space built to last 20 years out of cheap, toxic, low-quality materials that degrade over time. The cost of that standard portable is $165,000 to a school district. There are greener portables out there that are truly just greener space at almost double that cost. And then there's the seed classroom. It comes at $260,000, and it comes with all the components and systems necessary to be a living building classroom that teaches. It pays back its operation and maintenance in just seven years' time, making it the cheapest option, the lowest cops option, over the 50-year life of its building. The kids in our first seed got it, and they created this ad campaign to help us teach grown-ups. I think their graph is actually better than mine, so I just like to give them a little shout-out. <laughs> um, we talked about this a lot, but we knew that building one was truly proof of concept. So we did, and we put it on display in Seattle for a month. We had thousands of visitors, including eight school districts. They all walked in expecting to see this. Instead, they saw this. They saw daylight and color, exposed systems they could look at and learn from, a classroom built for experiential, hands-on, sustainable learning, and they wanted that for their kids. We truly are the only sustainable, portable classroom that teaches, and we're patent pending. Every seed classroom comes with a seed packet, an operation and maintenance manual with systems and components explained technically, then followed behind by K-12 lesson plans that teach students and teachers how they can actually learn from the building itself and actually turn it into larger studies within the classroom space. We're seeking funding for our seed patch, the online portal that would connect seed classrooms across the country and the world, allow their performance data to be accessed real time by clicking on a map, and then also provide a place for students and teachers to connect, share data and lesson plans, and ask questions. Questions like, what are you growing on your green wall this week? Why is your seed producing more energy than ours? There are two, two, two seed classrooms in the United States right now, one in the Perkins School in Seattle and one in Pittsburgh. They're our first adopters, and they're testing these systems, and we'll test the seed patch once we have it funded. Um, they'll continue to do lessons like this. This is a Perkins School classroom right now. We're looking at manufacturing partners, a regional or national manufacturing partner that would actually give us access to all of their manufacturing facilities nationwide. This gives us avenues to procurement and get on pre-certified procurement lists, meaning they don't have to be low bid anymore. The numbers in black and white, 150,000 portables in the next two years equals 1,500 seed classrooms with just 1% of that market. $10,000 royalty per seed from a manufacturing partner equals $15 million in net revenue to Seed Collaborative in the next two years. That's exciting, but what's more exciting is this. 1,500 seed classrooms equals 45,000 students. 45,000 students exposed to sustainable education every day. 45,000 students growing up to ask, why aren't all buildings living and making it a reality? Thank you.